Hey guys, welcome back. So the last video I did, we talked about how to overdub as a classical musician. And this video, what I want to do is talk about uh, a few of the things I like to do when I'm mixing cello. You can do this for all strings. And I've even used these techniques on saxophone when I recorded saxophone. But uh, they're very simple techniques. I don't believe in a lot of processing. I believe in getting the recording side of that right. And I will be doing a video of uh, me recording, but I don't have. I, I want to wait until I have a new project to work on. Um, but some good guidelines in recording would be: uh, you take the entire size of the instrument that you're recording, and you you basically uh, divide that in half, and that's how far away your microphone should be. Obviously, you should be having your headphones on if you're working in a studio by yourself, or if you have an isolated room, you're listening on near fields and you're, someone's moving that mic, or pr probably you are moving that mic around, and you are finding the good balance between the bass and, f and high and, and mid-frequency tones that you're looking for just with the microphone, and do that before you even touch a knob on anything post or um, as you are recording um, if you're using EQs. I'm waiting on my stupid uh, console to load up, it's ah, uh, it's not loading, but you should still be able to hear me. I like to uh, do a little bit of processing on the way in, but mostly what I'm doing is cutting out some of the low frequency if I know I don't need it. All right, so we've gotten that out of the way. When we are recording cello, uh, let me go ahead and go in my mixer, um, and I'll just play what I have for you in this little selection. Has the world gone So I'm going to mute the vocals so we can focus on uh, the important instruments. So what you should hear is the piano is kind of in the middle, acoustic guitar is floating up top in the high frequencies a little bit, and then I have cello in the bass as well as left and right to the piano. That's how this mix is set up. That's not going to be every mix, and I'll show you another example where I do something different. Um, now, let me go into my uh, – well, first, before I go into my cello bus, let me actually show you what I have going on in these cellos. Uh, I'll solo this cello. <laughs> And that, all I'm doing is cutting it to about 200. That is an extreme cut. <laughs> but I like, uh, if I'm going to be panning something to the side, I like to get rid of the low end because as we come to the center in our panning, panning being are we left and right or center or whatever, uh, I like to get rid of low frequency. I don't want too much low frequency building up left and right. So this one's about, it's left 60, so I'm going to go ahead and sweep. And I found that this was a, a pleasant sound when matched with the right side. And you see they're doing something different. And also, if you're interested in this plugin, it's called TDR Nova. It's not just an EQ. It is an EQ where you can establish a threshold, much like a compressor, but it doesn't compress the sound. Um, it it provides a deeper cut within the frequency if that frequency is building up too much. So if you have like a like a low 200 rumble on something, you could literally just come here uh, or for so I don't mess up my thing. I'll just show you right here. I had a little bit too much of this frequency range between 500 and 1k. I didn't want to get rid of it completely. You see, this is actually all the cut I'm doing. But then as we play I, prov I find that that provides uh, a nicer sound. Let me go ahead and bypass the CQ, and you'll actually hear what it sounds like with nothing. All right, and now I'll put it back in. So just play around with it and see what frequencies are building up too much. And TDR Nova is a great free plugin. The only thing I have going on after that is some compression. And now this is where I uh, talk about compression. Um, this is a, uh, a 
it's a it's it's a UA eleven seventy six, and this is a FET style compressor, very fast acting, modeled after the analog compressor, but you don't have to use this. You can use your compressor in your DAW right now. It doesn't matter. Um, I like this because it's simple, and this compressor is very aggressive. It, you're honestly, if you're a a real big mix engineer guy, you're probably like, what's this guy using this fast aggressive compressor? on a cello. Cello is supposed to be soft and sweet and kind of in the background. Well, I find that as I'm crafting my my cellos for the string section, I don't like to record a lot of cellos. And I find that people that are going for orchestral sounds think, okay, well, now I just need to record a bunch of cellos doing the same thing. But all you're going to do is run, it, is run it into phase issues, and you're going to get kind of this washy sound because it doesn't work like that. You have to record a room full of cellos to get a room sound that is going to do that type of sound justice. So most of us don't have access to a room full of cellos. So what we do is we overdub. Now, my system for overdubbing is, number one, um, I don't like to record a bunch of cellos doing the same thing. I stick with one cello doing one part and then I pan them left and right accordingly depending on how much bass frequency there is. The more bass frequency, the closer to the center, the less bass frequency and the higher it is, the more I put it out to the left and right. And then what I do is I compress them accordingly so that they are pushed up just a little bit. I don't like a ton of aggression. You'll see this VU meter is not moving that much. Not even moving right there. So let me just solo that. I like what this does because it brings it forward slightly, cleans up the low end a tiny bit, and a lot. The, the algorithm for this, the nonlinearities in this plug-in I find do something kind of tasteful to the cello so I like to use it and I put it on everything in fact all my cellos have those cuts because every cello gets a different cut and then we come to the bus now a bus if you don't know what a bus is you take your instruments these are all cellos and I'm routing them to one one bus I'm taking these I'm highlighting them I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna say cellos depending on your DAW the uh, the system is a little different but that's how Studio One works. So if I solo this bus, you'll hear all the cellos. Okay, so what I do here, I got a little more things going on and I have Soothe not turned on because I decided that I didn't need it. This is just like Nova, except you have to pay for it. It's kind of expensive and it makes those cuts for you automatically to avoid frequency buildup and harshness that's kind of my secret arsenal, but here's what I got going on here. I have a uh, API uh, channel strip, gain to low pass and high pass, EQ right there, but we go gate, compression, EQ, and then you can choose the order by pressing like pre-dynamic and whatever, but don't get too caught up in that. You'll see I'm adding some highs, taking away some of the harsh mids, Taking away 500, I love taking away 500 because I find that that gets out of the way for the other instruments, and then I'm not doing anything with the lows. Again, every mix has its own own thing going on. After that, I got some nice saturation, not doing a whole lot, and then I have a mix bus compressor to glue everything together, but that is just with this mix. I've just played around with it, and that's what I like, and I have less going on in other mixes usually. So here's what that section sounds like again with everything. If you listen, I don't have a lot of cellos going on in the center because again, the vocals are the star of the show here and they need to be in the center and they'll kind of cover up whatever's in the center anyways. So we don't really need to worry about filling up the center too much. Um, focus on keeping your lows in the center um, they don't even have to be exactly centered. They can be slightly offset. And then separate your highs. Uh, my system involves uh, cutting out all the low end that you don't need and then compressing slightly to bring it forward, not overdubbing cellos, doing the same thing because you run into phase issues. 
but recording cellos doing separate things so that they have this nice creamy gel, almost like a, a puzzle coming together and acting in harmony. All right, and we'll take a, a look at another example here. Okay, so we're back to the overdub example that I used because um, I find that this is a lot of times where a lot of people are going to start if they don't have a, an artist to work with. They're just it's them and their instrument, and they, and they just want to work in overdubs. And I'll go into detail about what these little blue lines are. Studio One actually has uh, Melodyne integration. It's an auto-tune software. Um, and just so you guys know, I can play in tune. Uh I find that the resonance you get when all instruments are perfectly in tune, uh, it's it's important to go ahead and just tune it with the program just to get it there 100% or as close as you can to allow that resonance to take place and then to avoid harsh frequency clash. So if I double click, you'll see the lines where Melodyne has taken over. Oof, they're kind of blown up here. But all I did was edit it slightly. So let's go ahead and go into the mix. And again, you see the same setup I have. But look, I have even fewer cellos. Um, actually, yeah, even fewer cellos. But I have, instead of extreme left and right and like perfectly center, I have these two bass frequencies panned 26, 26 left, right, 60, 60 left, right, low frequencies towards the middle, and then higher frequencies towards the exterior. Same setup, only this time I'm not getting rid of so much low end. Why? Because this is, a, this is not a mix where I have lots of things going on, so I can allow more bass information to come through. And uh, I didn't even change it for the uh, outer frequencies because it's okay to have that wash of low energy. And if I were to put the, an the analyzer in, you'll actually see... <laughs> There's not a whole lot of stuff going on here anyways. I find that a lot of this is just mud or, or low frequency hum. But you'll see I'm getting a lot of resonance built up here. And so I choose to get rid of it with the TDR Nova. Um, and again, another great free plugin. And then I'm busting everything once more. I got way less going on. But I still choose to go into this UAD API vision channel strip. And uh, I'm, I'm even cutting some of the low end um, in the 300 range. Because again, I just I find that the cellos aren't resonating there very much, um, and I have to get rid of it somewhere because I didn't do it up here. Um, part of me liked the way that the low end got compressed with the 1176, so I chose to leave it in pre-compressor. So again, just play around with it. I'm only uh, high passing the 30 there, but that's not even necessary. Let's see. Um, going into a studer. So I, I don't even have uh, a compressor on the bus because this is not really a mix where I have lots of things going on. So I just put it on the master. Again, going with the UAD API 2500 for a little bit of glue. And then I'm busting everything to verb. And I find that this verb is really washy. It's actually just the open air, just the stock plugin that comes with uh, Studio One. It's pretty good. <laughs> I like it for the long trails it offers, and I just I find that it lets everything kind of build up in the beginning, and then you can sculpt it with the EQ. When I'm EQing um, verb, and I EQ verb all the time, if I had a different verb, I'd literally have an EQ going before or after. I'll play around with that, but I'll, I'll get rid of some of the lows, and I'll get rid of some of the highs, and I'll kind of keep it in the middle because I don't want all the highs and lows getting caught up. I want the, the juicy center, right? So, again, here's what all this stuff sounds like. Yeah, guys, so um, just as a recap, when you're recording cello, start with the microphone placement and move that microphone or not just cello, but all single-voiced instruments, including vocals, if you're doing overdubs with vocals. 
move the mic around and find where you get the best balance before you touch a knob and then go ahead and if you want to uh, take away some lows on the way in, that's cool. But I prefer not to do anything drastic on the way in. Uh, and that's me. Uh, when I'm mixing, what I like to do is I give uh, a TDR Nova to each and I find the resonating frequency. So everything's kind of flat. And then I compress a little bit to bring it forward some and clear up some of the muddiness and give it some more punch. And then I bring it together to a bus. And then from the bus is where I really start to shape it to the track. Um, and I use a few uh, things. And I do all of that before I place verb and delay and things like that. And really, that's it. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, you can kind of play around with this model. Um, but I find that this tends to give me the best result. And uh, I've recorded on a lot of records where people tend to be happy. Um, so yeah, guys, hope this was helpful and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.